Hi, I'm Joe Walensky, and I'm the program manager for Convey UX, which is Seattle's annual user experience conference. And we're going into our eighth year, so that's pretty exciting. It's produced by Blink, and the next one's coming up March 3rd, 4th, and 5th in downtown Seattle. And one of the fun things I get to do is to talk to our many speakers that will be at the conference. And today I have the pleasure of speaking with one of our keynote presenters, Stacy Higginbotham. Hello, Stacy. How are you doing today? Hi, Joe. I'm really glad to be here. Well, uh, we're really excited to uh, have you as part of the program. And uh, I'm speaking from Blink's downtown Seattle headquarters. Where are you talking to us from? I'm speaking to you from my office in Bainbridge Island, which I believe is about 35 minutes by boat from you. Uh, we're both pretty familiar with it, and uh, so yes, yeah, just a quick, pleasant boat ride. Um, well, uh, I think I think a lot of people are familiar uh, with your work, but for people that may not be, uh, why don't you talk a little bit about your background, what you're interested in, the types of things that you're doing now? Sure. So I do a lot of things. I am a co-host on This Week in Google. I have a podcast called the Internet of Things podcast, and I have a newsletter and website called Stacy on IoT. And all I do is the Internet of Things. And I kind of creep a little AI and just some future futurism in there. But I've been doing this sort of work, just reporting, for about 20 years. And I like to say that I started covering semiconductors and wireless and cloud computing and all this really nerdy stuff. And then finally with IoT, I get to put it together into something that's, that's actually fun and exciting to talk about. Well, yeah, it, it, it is an exciting growing area and I, I have enjoyed li listening to uh, the podcasts that you do. And uh, I, I mean, you, you also really know how to uh, kind of build things and uh, you have some practical skills in that area besides uh, understanding the technical parts of it. So, uh, um, I mean, how does that kind of uh, manifest itself uh, in your career? I assume it's just fun always uh, tinker, tinkering around and learning new things. It's always fun until the lights don't come on when it's dark and people want the lights to come on. So I've experimented at before moving to Seattle, I lived in not a rental house in Austin, and I had like 80 different connected devices that I, I pieced together into this. Is it utopian? Is it dystopian? It depends on the day and what was working. So I have a lot of practical experience living with the type of technology that people are trying to sell us. And it's a lot of fun to see how it affects your life and how you know, it, it kind of brings some things to, to mind that you may not have thought of and probably the designers didn't even think of. So that's, yeah, that's, that's what I do for fun. And I, I build things only when I have to. My, my goal is for normal people to be able to, like, get the same experience. And we're not there yet, but we will be. Well, thanks for uh, digging in and investigating all these areas and uh, helping me explain it and uh, give your recommendations on things. Uh, is there anything uh, lately that's caught your interest? Sure. So right now, I read a lot. When I'm, when I'm not troubleshooting my smart home, I read a lot. So I am reading a book called Infinite Detail. It's a, a novel by Tim Mon, and it is, it is set in two time periods roughly today and about 10 years after what they call the crash. And so in the book, you've got people talking about the today time period is following a hacker who is concerned about the effect of smart cities and all of your data being recorded and everything, you know, being tracked and optimized for our convenience. And then the other side is basically 10 years after the internet goes down and what we're left in, like any sort of dystopian or apocalyptic novel, you're left with lots of people, you know, fighting for scraps. But it was also, it's also shocking to see that everything we're building right now is gone. So I, I just, it feels like we're in our digital society, everything is kind of impermanent. And they, you know, there's obviously the thing, the shout out to paper books as opposed to Kindles. There's cassette tapes versus you know, CDs or Spotify connections. And it was just, it's just kind of eye-opening and super ironic because I am reading it on my Kindle. But 
I, I'm really enjoying the book and it's kind of making me think a lot about what we're actually building. Should we be building it? And then how do we make it more permanent? Well, I, uh, I may have to uh, check that book out. It sounds like it, it, it's a fun read. And it, it kind of matches uh, how things come across and some of the things you write about and uh, uh, talk about where uh, you have uh, perspectives that are both uh, cautionary but also very welcoming about uh, uh, the way that technologies are evolving. Um, and. Uh, Maybe the uh, next uh, thing to talk about is your session, which is titled Living a Life Without Secrets, Design in an Era of Internet of Things. So tell us a little bit about that. Sure. So I was having a conversation with someone about personalized medicine, actually. We were talking about like using IoT for better health and delivering quality care for like chronic conditions. And she said, she was like, I am incredibly positive about this, but what people don't necessarily realize is they're going to be giving their doctors the power to have constant surveillance over the most intimate aspects of their lives and bodies. And I was like, holy cow, you are right. And I, I had thought about it in terms of like bringing a microphone and a camera into my house and, and thinking about it from that point of view. But what we are building today with the data crunching that we have and the connectivity that we have is this is this infrastructure that can be used to see everything and I mean everything and what we're finding out is I feel like I trust it if it's a computer evaluating things and giving insights like Stacy hasn't slept enough last night but I don't want the computer to tell an individual that Stacy hasn't slept enough because she was up at 3 a.m. worried because she hasn't finished her her story that was on a deadline which could all be pieced together. And that's terrifying. And I think we need to be thinking about how we build this stuff solely for the benefit of society, not for the benefit of companies, but for the benefit of individuals and societal goals. And if those societal goals are like surveillance, which kind of they might be in some places right now, maybe we shouldn't be building it. And that's, that's a big topic. But it's kind of where we are, and it's both why I'm excited about IoT, because if you can look at data very granularly, you could actually come up with ways to like, I call it making externalities you know, calculable, or making the invisible visible. So things like air pollution, you could see exactly where air pollution is happening in the moment, and you could actually tie it back to like a big polluter in your town. And that town could sue that polluter to clean it up or to help offset medical costs. So those are like the cool positive things. But that same data could be applied not to, to charge a polluter, but to maybe help it get away with things. Or maybe it would go towards individuals who have really janky lawnmowers that they can't afford to replace and you would be fined for having a janky lawnmower. So that that's kind of, that's what I'm really excited about and what I, going to talk a little bit about how to design for preventing that and think about that. Well, I mean, one of the things that, about that this area that, that you specialize in with the Internet of Things is, is to me, uh, you know, one of the, uh, the, the biggest aspects of it is that it exponentially creates opportunities for these things to be happening anywhere in anything and in ways that we hadn't at all really thought about and uh I, I, i'm not sure society is, is catching on to how fast things are moving with that i think yes if you look at people's concerns right now you know they're concerned about cameras in the home because cameras can put like potentially pictures of you naked on the internet right and we're, we're worried about that i don't know if, you know <laughs> In the future, we probably all will have naked pictures on the internet, but we're, we're probably not there yet. But what they don't think about is right now we're developing like there a new Wi-Fi product just launched that can do motion detection using a person walking through a room and disrupting the RF signals from Wi-Fi. And that, just by applying math to that disruption, you could actually see what a person is doing just the same way as you could see with the camera. And 
I don't think people are aware of the sophistication that is out there for understanding their actions and behaviors in the most private parts of their lives. And we probably should work on that. <laughs> Well, uh, it's going to be fun to uh, have you presenting your uh, thoughts at the conference, and uh, we'll look forward to uh, having you there when you make the, well, relatively short journey across the water to uh, downtown Seattle, and uh, well, just uh, thanks for uh, being part of our event. I'm glad to do it. I look forward to meeting everyone.